Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Shop Talk. I'm Riley Bowman here at the uh, the bunker, the company headquarters in Inglewood, Colorado. And today we are talking about drawing from a holster and presenting to the target efficiently. And I'm going to be actually doing a live demo as we talk about this. We'll be This will be kind of like a special live instruction uh, opportunity here today. So... Uh, it looks like we just have one logged in and it's got to be Jacob. <laughs> oh, hey, it just bumped up. Sweet. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Good to see you, buddy. And Michael, thanks for joining today, guys. Tris has now jumped in here. Good to have you, buddy. Hey, hey. Uh, so, hey, Jay. Jay just won. You know what? Jay, hold one moment. Oh, it's, it's his, his. Cut it open. Jay, check us out, buddy. <laughs> Jay just won this in our Guardian Nation live broadcast on Thursday night, and he was super stoked. Yeah, mail it ASAP. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to get that out today. Uh, so this is a complete... There you go, Jay, and everybody else watching. A complete AR-15 rifle kit. How about that? Congrats to Jay for winning that in our Guardian Nation live broadcast. So, there you go, buddy. Um, hey, Bobby. Richard. Chad. Hey, good to have you checking in. And Frankie. Good, good, good. So, anyway, super excited to send that to you, Jay. And I uh, just happened to be convenient to grab this and let you have a peek. All right, so again, today we are doing this shop talk live, talking about drawing from the holster and presenting to the target efficiently. Uh, that's, I think, one of the most basic core competency, competencies that every concealed carrier must have. I mean, you carry a gun concealed for a reason. If you can't get that out of the holster and on your target quickly and efficiently, then why do you carry the gun, right? So this is at the base of everything we do is being able to, I think, draw the gun and get it on target quickly and efficiently and fire those first shots. So he who typically gets first shots, first accurate shots on the threat or on the other target, that's generally who wins in a gunfight. So this is absolutely the most basic of essentials for a concealed carrier. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, is how to do that quickly and efficiently and also how to practice that skill. I'll walk you through some some basics on that. Uh, yeah, good comment there, Tris. Hey, Jason from California and Janine and Gant and Cami. Thanks for checking in, Cami. Been seeing you a bunch lately. Good to have you. Michael from Eugene, Oregon and Delena. Anyway, he or she, yeah, that's true. Good point. Um, all right, so we're going to jump right into it, all right, folks? Um, but first, today I'm going to be demonstrating some things, both with a cert pistol. You see it here. It's my personal one. I I've owned this thing for like four years. It's I've had it a long time. Um, I've actually upgraded the sights. They don't come this way. I put standard Glock sights on my cert pistol. They're a little bit better than the standard ones that come on the cert guns are just a black plastic front and rear. There's no outlines, no dots or anything. Uh, it's really easy to actually swap those out. If you ever are wondering about that, let me know. I can make a quick video about that. It's easy to do. Um, so anyway, Cert pistol. This is their original model 110, which is modeled after a Glock 17. Uh, this gives a resetting trigger for dry fire purposes. I'm telling you all this in case you're not familiar with these. And it emits a laser, which is sighted in with my sights so that I can simulate acquiring targets and hitting those targets, resetting the trigger, practicing transitions between targets, all sorts of stuff. So this will be one of the uh, primary tools that I use today, and this is something I use on a daily or weekly basis for dry fire practice. And today I'll also be using a Glock 19, which to make this even safer and more convenient, I've set this up with the Cool Fire Trainer. Some of you, I know Elky is familiar with this. I think he's watching. Uh, hey, Nate. And uh, so the Cool Fire Trainer uses compressed air inside this this, this barrel. This barrel replaces the standard barrel in a Glock. You see the end of it here does not look like a barrel. And it's charged with a CO2 canister like this. 
So we charge that with air. Now my canister is actually kind of low. I have more in order, but it hasn't arrived in time. So this is only gonna allow me to get about three or four good shots before I have to recharge it. But still great for uh, dry fire practice today. Hey, Mark, Elky says, let me some, some cool fire. I know that Elky uses it a lot. Um, David says, I use glow in the dark nail polish for my sights. Works well. Yeah, as long as you have a light source that actually illuminates that glow in the dark, uh, you know, fluorescent stuff. So, anyway, all right, so we're gonna get into it. So, I got my Glock 19 with Cool Fire Trainer, I got my CERT pistol. Today, I'm gonna be demonstrating out of a OWB holster. I know this is kind of low on the camera. Here you go. This is the Q Series Stealth. Uh, holster. We actually sell these on our website. We have some in stock right here. I know because I just saw them the other day. So I'll be demonstrating with this today. Great little holster from Q Series. And then I have a custom holster of my own make and design up here in front for appendix. I'm going to be demonstrating drawing and presenting to the target from both positions. Okay, so you can see it both ways because my draw is a little different from appendix than it is from three o'clock or four o'clock. And right now this is mounted at about three thirty, just a little bit behind the hip. All right, so let's get into it. All righty, so I got them both here. Let's start with the carry position that most of you are probably familiar with. Most of you probably carry three or four or five o'clock. Um, IWB, OW, OWB doesn't really matter. Um, but this is probably the most common popular method for carrying concealed is somewhere in this position. So we'll, we'll start with that first. So whenever I'm drawing from the holster, uh, I want to be thinking about my grip because the way I teach grip is that it starts from the holster. All right, does that make sense? Grip starts from the holster. So I want to achieve the grip that I'm going to be shooting with right from the holster. You see here that I have my grip high up on the gun. I've got the web of my hand buried into the beaver tail of the gun, okay? I flagged my thumb high, and you'll see why in just a minute here, okay? So, but this is the same grip. If I finished building my grip and I went to shoot, nothing changes from how I gripped this from the holster, all right? So once again, from the holster, I want to achieve the same grip that I'm shooting the gun with. Make sense? All right, that's really critically important because we don't want to get to this point and then go, oh, got to change the grip a little bit because we didn't get a master grip from the start. So again, when I teach about how to grip the gun correctly, I teach it from the holster because that's where it begins. So when I teach draw, I do follow the kind of traditional four or five step process that many people are familiar with that teach. It still teaches at a lot of police academies. That's where I first really learned the uh, four step or five step draw process. So first step is to, now naturally I gotta clear a garment, so I'm gonna do that. But to simplify things for a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the garment uh, behind the gun. All right, so first step is I gotta achieve that master grip on the gun. And my support hand is gonna go where? It's gonna go to my chest. Hey, Anita. So my support hand's gonna go to my chest. And this, there's a reason for this, Two, twofold actually. Number one is this is a good safe place for this hand to be. It's not hanging around out here where there's the risk of me muzzling my hand as I go to join the, the two hands for a two-hand grip. Okay, so this is a good safe place. Now, an exception would be is if I was in some sort of altercation and I had my hand on my threat, if I had my hand on my bad guy, if it was up trying to defend myself, then, then that's fine too, right? But that's still up and out of the way of where my gun's going to be and where it's going to be firing. And that, this is a topic for another day entirely, but for, for t today's purposes, we're going to put place the support hand on the chest because it's a good safe place. And number two, because that's where it's most efficient for our hands to join up, meet, and establish that two-handed grip for the presentation. All right? So step one, support hand is going to go to the chest. Shooting hand is going to go right to the gun and achieve my master grip. Step two is I'm going to clear the holster. And I like to go as high up as I can. All right? Step three is I'm going to orient this to the target like so, all right? And then, and this happens all very quickly, right? Very fluid, so three and four are gonna happen very fast. So from here to here, we're joining hands. 
Anybody familiar with Mike Sieglander, you'll know he teaches using a reverse Judy chop. Um, what this is, this is an index point where we take basically the knuckle of my support shooting hand and it's going to index right there against my main hand, my, my, my shooting hand, and right underneath the trigger guard. All right? So three and four, we're going to join the hands. And then as I begin to press out to the target, this hand is rolling in. And these, you'll, you'll note that the way I do this is these hands get positioned first, okay? The palm is not yet on the gun of the support hand, all right? So I've locked these fingers in first as I'm pushing up to the target, and then I keep rolling that hand in. As the arms are extending, what happens is it very naturally pulls this all in nice and tight. You see how that works? So we start here, and we start rolling out, and boom. And that's where the grip ends up. So index here underneath the trigger guard. And as I extend, lock in those fingertips and continue to extend. And then everything comes in nice and tight. We get complete, complete pressure and support all the way around the grip of the gun. See that? All right. And then we are out at the target, presented at the target, ready to fire. Okay. So that's how I teach grip and drawing. It's hard for me not to make this a grip, a little bit of a grip course because it all kind of has to happen at the same time, right? So I teach grip as part of the draw sequence, all right? So let me show this from the other side so you can see what my hands are doing from this view. So on the draw, now I, I decided I needed to clear my garment again. So if we're clearing a garment, where does our hand end up? We grab the garment, we bring it up high. So our hand still ends up up high on the chest, see that? So again, I'm clearing the garment. My hand is ending up high on the chest. Master grip on the gun. Here's step two, you can't see it yet. Step three, I'm oriented to the target. Step four, I'm sliding things over, joining the hands. And then five, we're going out to the target and finishing building that grip. You see that? Boom. Now, earlier I told you I, I flag my thumb high on the, on the grip of the gun. That's because that clears all this real estate for the grip. So as this forms, then finally my shooting hand thumb just comes to rest on the other hand there. See that? But it stays high until we get to that point and then we just rest it. Okay? All right, so that's basically, that's, that's kind of how I teach it a lot of times, a five-step draw process. Now, if we're talking about efficiency, <clears throat> naturally, the shortest distance from point A to point B is in a straight line. That would look like this. We clear the holster and we go straight out to the target. But while that may intuitively you think, well, that wouldn't that be the fastest way to get out there? It can be, especially if you mastered how to join up these hands and get everything in the same place the same way every time. And as long as you got that extension to the same point the same way every time. But here's one of the challenges of that is because there's no real index points along the way, it's a little bit more difficult for a person to master and get their hands in the same location the same way every time and be able to present out and get to that same point every time where everything lines up with your eye, with where you're looking, with whether the threat or the target is. So for efficient presentation to a target, I like to see it start high from, high, from the high chest. Because from here, we're going to go in a straight line from here to here. See that? It's a straight line from the high chest, boom, to my target and to my eye. And I shouldn't see any like ducking of the head or changing of my overall posture and stance as I'm doing this. So I'm, I'm here, my, hand, my, my hands and my gun are here, and I'm going straight out, and everything should stay basically the same. Very little movement in the rest of the body. That's important, that's key, because if we do that, we can get the, the presentation to the target, we can bring the sights right to the eye, right to the target the same way every time, very quickly, very efficiently. For, for sure, we want this to here being a straight line, because if we're doing this, or if we're doing this, we're not in a straight line. They call this fishing, and we call this bowling, okay? We want a straight line. At this point, for sure, that straight line from point A to point B is the most efficient way to do it. Okay? So, again, 
at this high chest position, my hands are not yet completely joined, but they're touching. From here, again, I'm finishing building the grip and I'm extending straight out to the target. Where are my eyes? Initially, my eyes are on the target. Then all I'm doing is bringing the gun and the sights to where I'm looking. And at some point, I'm gonna transition my eyesight, my focus, back to the sights, to the front sight in particular. I was already looking right at the target. I'm bringing the gun to the target. And as I bring that front sight into view, as soon as I can, I pick it up, focus on that front sight, get everything lined up, and I'm ready to break that shot. Does that make sense? So I'm here, I go, I'm focused on the target. Right about here, I can start seeing and picking up the front sight, maybe even a little bit earlier. At that point, I begin getting things lined up so that by the time I reach full extension, everything is already in place. Sights are aligned on the target. I'm ready to hit the trigger. Bang. All right, so we're talking about very efficient presentation and firing to the target. We also want to be efficient as far as getting on that trigger. If we've already made the decision that we have to shoot, that we have a need to shoot, there's no reason to get out here then and then take some amount of time and then put the finger on the trigger and press the trigger. If we're ready to shoot, we can shoot as soon as we have sights on target. Well, if I go in a straight line here, very efficient presentation, bring that front sight into the rear sight, then as soon as I hit that point, that full extension, I can take the shot because I know it's already there. All right? Yeah, so I know we have some comments and some questions coming in. Um, Jared says, uh, video yourself when you're dry firing. You'll definitely be able to see what you're doing wrong, provided you understand what it's, what it's supposed to look like, right? So that's obviously what we're doing here today is kind of showing you what it should look like. Um, Anita, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying the information here. Uh, that's, good. that's it? Okay, sweet. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good stuff, guys. All right, so again, I'm going to go from the beginning. In fact, I'll do this facing you, okay? So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And you saw as soon as I got my, think, my uh, gun to full extension, I'm hitting that trigger because there's no need for me to wait. Everything's already lined up because of the way that I built my grip and the way I presented to the target. I was able to pick up that sight very quickly and know that I'm already there and I'm ready to pull the trigger. Okay? High caliber, love the cert. Yeah, it's a great training tool, great training aid for sure. Okay, so that's a little bit about the draw. Let me talk a little bit about how to practice it. Okay? So, this is what dry fire practice looks like to me. And I still, everything I'm going to show you right now, I still do all of this to this day. Okay? I don't always do this in the same practice session. Um, some, some days I just go, today I'm only going to work on this one thing. And the most basic place that can start is right here, achieving that master grip. Okay? So today I'm going to just practice getting that master grip. And occasionally, I will pull it out just to check. Is that how I would grip the gun normally? If so, then sweet, great, that's perfect. So I'm just gonna spend some more time getting some reps. Folks, if you're at home and if you, or in a safe place and you have the, the means and ability to do this safely, you're welcome to do this along with me, all right? Okay, so I'm just gonna do some more reps here. I'm just gonna work on achieving that master grip, hitting it the same place, the same, the same way every time, okay? And I'm just going to do that. Now, if you have to go slower until you really get it, then go slower. So I can just go nice and slow, nice and easy. That's a great place to start. Slow. Make sure you hit it every time. The goal here is to do this many hundreds or thousands of times so that it's going to all add up collectively. And one day, you'll go right to that gun perfectly every time. Okay? And that's the idea. All right, so for dry fire practice sessions, sometimes I'll, like I said, I'll just do that. I'll just practice going to this point. Did I get it? Yeah, it feels good. Did I get it? Looks good. You guys agree? All right. If we're satisfied with that or if we still have time, and I might do that 50 times in, in one practice session. All right. <clears throat> At that point, I might just go to the point where my hands begin to join. And I'm going to be focusing mostly on how I index the support hand on the gun. 
because that's important. If I can hit this same index point every time, then finishing building the grip is going to be very natural and intuitive. All right. Now I'll go slow this time. So the goal here is to do it perfectly. Perfect repetitions, right? <clears throat> you want many, many repetitions, but you get no value from it if those repetitions are not perfect. See that? Okay. Now, one tip that sometimes people will struggle with, with this idea of clearing out of the holster and getting oriented towards the target, is they'll kind of take some shortcuts or they're a little bit unsure about how to get from here to here, even to here. One, one tip that I like to just point out is when I clear the holster, I kind of have this little chicken wing thing going on. All I got to do to get oriented on the target is just drop the elbow. You see that? And when I do that, this arm is basically horizontal with the ground or parallel to the ground. Right? So just drop the elbow and I'm oriented at the target and I'm ready to join the hands. And again, where is the support hand? On the high chest because... That's where this is going to come to, and that's where we're going to start from for presenting out to the target, right? So I will do a whole bunch of repetitions of just going from here to here. Join those hands, and I'm going to go ahead and reverse the process, and I'm going to go back to the holster. And I'm going to do this deliberately and slowly a bunch of times, okay? And I'm going to go back to the holster. Let's do some with clearing the garment. Clearing the garment, especially when I'm carrying on the hip or behind the hip, I gotta bring that support hand all the way across so I can get good purchase on. Now, there's two methods too. Some people will just grab the t-shirt or the clothing in the mid-section area. They'll just pinch it and grab it up. And some will grab from the bottom. I actually fan my fingers out kind of like this when I grab my shirt. And the reason why that is is because I don't get just one attempt. I get actually up to four attempts if one finger misses the shirt, then the other fingers that are following along behind will tend to catch it. So I actually fan the hand and get a good purchase on the shirt every time. Okay, so I gotta come across the body, get this cleared up out of the way, and I'm gonna pull it back over across so my hand is where I want it to be. Center chest, high center chest. And I'm driving the hand to the gun, and I'm gonna come out, clear, rotate, join hands. And I'm gonna go back. Let's do a couple repetitions just like that again. Folks liking this? You guys liking this? Yep. See that? And we'll just do that a whole bunch of times. We're not gonna do it right now. We're gonna keep moving along. But that's the idea. Ooh, I kinda lost the shirt there. But you see, I was able to still get it out of the way. And part of, the, part of that was it actually snagged on. I've got a second holster on here. <laughs> so I'm gonna demonstrate appendix here in just a moment. And uh, so normally I don't have two, two holsters and two guns on me, at least like this. So again, I'm going to go across. I'm going to grab a shirt, okay? Clear. And there I am. Then I might even spend some time dry fire practice, just pre practicing presenting from high center chest out to the target and coming back nice and smooth. And what, what am I going to be focusing on here? Making it a straight line and picking up the front sight as soon as I can and bringing that onto the target, okay? Boom, boom. Gonna use the camera, your, your guys' view as my aiming point. Okay, so I want you to see, boom. See that? I'm just gonna do this a bunch of times, boom. Pick up that front sight, bring everything in line. I'm focusing on you, the camera, as my target. All I gotta do is bring this to my eye. Straight line, easy to do. And then again, building my grip, just like I showed you earlier on the extension. <clears throat> doing in front of a mirror will help, yep, and also videoing yourself, totally. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now too. I, I can see myself, obviously, in the camera, in the viewfinder here. And uh, yeah, it's good, good to see good to get validation that what you're doing is working. Again, you want to, on your presentation, you want to be watching for this or this. We don't want to be bowling or fishing the gun out there. We want this to be already oriented at the threat. Is it already pointing at you guys? It is. So once I get to this point, I'm already oriented towards the threat and I'm going out. 
straight out to you, straight out to the target. Bang, see that? That's what we're looking for on that presentation, okay? Straight line, pick up the front sight, fire your shot. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about appendix. Appendix carry is similar, <clears throat> but it's obviously coming from a different position, and, and, the, and the procedure is a little bit different, right? It's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit more abbreviated. So from appendix, it's going to be similar, though. My support hand is going to go somewhere on the high chest. My shooting hand is going to go to the gun and achieve my master grip. See that? High up on the gun. Nice, good, firm pressure around it. Where's my... Uh, my uh, trigger finger, it's indexed, of course, to, along the frame or the slide of the gun. So we're going for the master grip. And then I'm actually, when I'm going to do this, I'm going to clear out of the holster. And I'm going to actually come up to the high center chest about like so. See this? Anybody recognize this position? This is kind of like, this, this is what we call position Sewell. All right? So I'm going to basically come sort of to that position. This is how I do it from appendix. So I clear the holster and I come right up to basically this position. Where's this hand? It's already right there. I'm already ready to index and present to the target. So this really is almost like a, a real simple three-step process. Clear and achieve master grip. Clear out of the holster, come up to this position, to the high center chest, and then index and go straight out to the target. You see why appendix carry is, is so fast? I've got to come from all the way over here and get up to here and out, whereas from here, it's just like so. Very, very, very simple, very fast. Let me go slow again, okay? All right, so I'm going to clear my garment. Boom. At the same time, okay? Let me do it simultaneously. Boom. See that? It's really hard to do it slowly and do it simultaneously. Master grip. Clear out of the holster, come to the high center chest. And as is true with position Sewell, anyone that knows this or teaches this, your thumbs need to touch. See that? Hand is, or the gun is resting along the back of the hand of the support hand. That's how you make sure that you don't muzzle your feet or your legs when you're in this position. I like that because this is a very easy position for me to roll into and out of. You see how my grip very quickly just changes there? Sewell, out to two-hand grip presentation. Boom. So when I draw from appendix, that's all I'm doing. I'm basically coming to a position type Sewell. All right. Now, if I needed to shoot somebody in extreme close quarters, all I would do is modify that slightly and come back slightly, and I'm oriented at, the, at a good location to be shooting somebody that's, you know, arm's length away. <clears throat> all right. So master grip. Come out of the holster, join the hands, index, right? Reverse, this is the Judy chop. Okay, and then roll that out and finish building the grip. Let me demonstrate from this side. I'll go kind of at a slight angle. You'll be able to see it a little bit better. Index, clear out of the holster, join hands, roll and press out, pick up the front sight, finish, and take your shot. You want to see, you want to see what the cool fire trainer does? Check us out, guys. If you haven't seen this before, And again, my air tank is really low. I got, I got some more on order. So I only get a couple of trigger presses before I have to refill it. I don't have one of the big tanks for this yet. Elkie probably does. So again, clear my garment, achieve my master grip, come up here, finish the grip, extend, press trigger. Okay? A little faster. See that? And that's how fast appendix can be. That's a faster draw, right? Whereas for me to try to go the same level of speed from OWB or IWB 3, 4 o'clock, it's a lot more going on there, a lot more distance I gotta cover. So it's not quite as fast. So anyway, that's one of the reasons why I like appendix. Not that I'm trying to sell you on appendix, but, but that's where I traditionally carry. I just mounted this on today so I could demonstrate for all the rest of you what drawing and presenting from the holster looks like from a more traditional position, at least traditional as we think, as most people think of it. Um, Eric says, dang, that's fast. Yeah, a lot of practice, bud. Um, 
Elky, 20 ounces, is that the size of the tank you use? Yeah, I need to get a bigger one. But I have like 10 of these on order. <laughs> they just didn't arrive in time. These are really, this is really cool though, guys. You just refill this thing up. Normally on the Glock 19, I get about 15 to 20 shots between refills. And right now I'm barely getting, even getting one. Yeah, that's like one sort of like 80% power. And after that, it's nothing. Cool fire trainer. Practice makes perfect. You got it. So again, when I practice dry fire, just practicing from the draw, I'll just do this a whole bunch of times. Make sure I get that clearing the garment perfect the same way every time. And make sure I'm achieving that master grip. Just do this a whole bunch of times, guys. This is how it starts. This is where it begins. Put in the work. See that? And then I might come up to this transition point, right? Or index. Now one little thing for you, especially for you uh, appendix carriers. This is, a, this is something I've learned just from kind of, you know, I've had a couple of times in the past where I've gotten a little bit lazy and I've started trying to join the hands in front of the body because I'm trying to go fast. Let me explain what's dangerous or what's, what's the problem with this. Sometimes when you're trying, and this is true also from OWB or IWB positions, okay, okay guys? So this can happen to any of you, but I've noticed it seems to be more of an issue for me coming from appendix. What happens when we try to really pick up the pace is we end up trying to join the hands out here. And the risk is of trying to go so fast that you miss and you end up slipping a finger into the trigger guard and actually firing a shot before you get, you know, actually firing a shot with your support hand finger. You know, you're trying to just build the grip, but you just miss. That's going to be more of an issue when you don't stay true to form and come up to this position and then join the hands. And here's the other thing about appendix. You want to get the gun up above the support hand, which is why that position sewel works so well. If you kind of come to that, you know, pseudo position sewel, you come up above the hand, you will not have that risk of sneaking that index finger of your support hand into the trigger guard and negligently discharging. I've never actually fired one off uh, with my support hand, but I had a couple times where I caught myself and either felt my finger almost go inside or I felt my hand slightly in front where it shouldn't be, you know, th stuff like that. So we want to stay true to form. Master grip, come up above the hand of the support hand and then join the hands and, and extend and finish building the grip. Let me give you this angle. This is a good angle. I'm going to go slow. See how that grip finishes? Again, as I'm extending, those fingers are locking in. And as the hands and the arms and the wrists all extend, then everything comes in. It basically gets pulled in very tightly. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm trying to keep these fingertips locked in to the back side of the other hand. And keeping that locked in as you extend, then it pulls everything in super tight. And that's, how you, that's one little secret of getting a really, really tight grip on the gun. All right. Ken, so glad I caught this. We'll have to rewatch later. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you missed in the beginning, bud. Um... Jacob's monitoring comments. Jacob, uh, anything else standing out? Uh, people would love to see a little bit more about that close combat position and what that might look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we call it a close combat position. That's basically what is sort of like position three if you're coming from the OWB uh, holster or IWB. So basically, if you'll recall, I'm drawing and I'm coming up out of the holster clearing and rotating towards the target. So I'm dropping that elbow. And this would be a position where if I was in extreme close quarters, then I could, you know, I could shoot my threat from this position. So I might have my hand out, extended, you know, defending a blow. I might have my, my hand and my elbow tucked in around my head trying to protect myself from blows and try to get some distance and come out and shoot them, particularly like in the stomach, hips, that sort of area. That's kind of where that would be. Mark says, can you do one one-handed? And actually, that's a great question. I actually meant to demonstrate that. All right, so let's imagine we have a hand that's tied up, right? We have a garment to clear. How do we do this? Uh, Mike Sieklander teaches, teaches this as well. Uh, this is, I think, the best way to clear a garment with your dominant hand. Is I think of it as sort of like a, as like a letter C or almost like a circular motion, okay? So I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab the garment 
And so what I'm actually doing is I'm coming ar around to the left side of my body. I know it's reversed on, on the camera, but I'm right-handed here. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to pull this back this way. And once I get the shirt to where it's cleared off the gun, then I can sort of pin that there and drop the hand to the gun. You see my shirt's kind of staying there anyway, right? So I'm going to clear the garment like so, bring this up to where it clears the gun, drop my hand down, achieve my master grip, and then I can present out to the target. Once again, that, that could be because either this arm got injured or I'm using this arm or hand to defend myself. Close combat position from appendix is pretty straightforward. So let's say if I was in close with somebody, somebody's trying to you know, really hurt me, um, trying to block a, you know, a knife or whatever, I could clear the garment with my shooting hand, get that master grip, and come into this close, co close combat position. All right? From where I normally draw to, it's not all that different, okay, from appendix. From this position, it's on the way to get to this position, all right? Um, we have a coupon code, we need to wrap it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, coupon code is Draw for the three. cert pistol. Draw three. Oh, actually it's gonna, oh, that's right. Okay guys, let me show you some stuff. Cert pistol, this week, this week only, up through Sunday evening. Cert pistols, Q-series holster from Gary Quasenberry, Q-series. Or I said the stealth holster earlier, I meant the covert, I just noticed that on the package. <laughs> I, I get the two mixed up all the time. I have both the stealth and the covert. I just can't remember which, which is which all the time. Uh, anyway, this is the covert holster. This is what I've been using today for the OWB demonstration. Okay. And also in the Concealed Carry Fundamentals DVD that we sell on our site as well, which includes some sections about draw and how that's done and how that's performed, kind of like I've just done for you here today. All three of these products... All three of these, was it 20%, 15%, 15, 15%? 15 off, and that's significant on the cert pistol. That saves you some, some dough for sure. All three of these products, 15% off. Use coupon code DRAW15, D-R-A-W-1-5, DRAW15, DRAW15, 15% guys. Q-Series Covert Holster, cert pistol, and the Concealed Carry Fundamentals DVD. Go check them out, all right? And guys, I hope this is helpful for you. Start this week, if you haven't done this before, and even if you still do it, it doesn't matter. Start this week and work on your dry fire practice. Do little mini drills like this, where you just break it down to the basics, and you start by making sure you get that index perfect every time, and then join those hands perfect every time, or we index that the same way every time, and then we present out to the target perfectly every time. Okay? Do that. Do it a whole bunch. Do it hundreds of times, thousands of times. It adds up. If you want to get to where you can get that one second or even sub-second draw, that's what it takes. It takes putting in the work and getting things to where they're fast and efficient. All right? Jacob, what's my fastest draw time ever, first shot? Uh, maybe 0.76. I was going to say about 0.75, three quarters of a second. I, I can't do that every day all the time perfectly, but I can hit that periodically. Consistently, I'm sub one second on the draw. All right. Talk to anybody that knows. Go listen to John Korea over at the uh, Active Self Protection channel. Guys, that the guy that gets the first or gal that gets the first accurate shot on the bad guy is usually the one that wins the fight. So, anyway, there you go. Take it easy. Be safe out there. Again, draw 15, 15% 15 off on the covert holster from Q Series Concealed Carry Fundamentals, Cert Pistol. You got it. All great training tools, training aids. Have a good one. We'll see you next week for Shop Talk. Quick preview, though. Podcast this week. Tomorrow is Justified Saves. Uh, we'll be covering a whole bunch of great stories tomorrow in uh, episode 299. In episode 300 on Thursday, that's crazy, we're going to make a big deal out of it. So we're going to be giving some stuff away, including a 300 blackout rifle kit from, Pal Ooh, excuse me, from Palmetto State Armory. So if you uh, want to have a chance to win the 300 blackout, uh, that'll be on the giveaway or podcast prize page where you sign up for our giveaways, uh, but it won't go live until tomorrow. All right, so 300 blackout giveaway on Thursday. Go to concealedcarry.com forward slash podcast prize. Make sure you're signed up for that as well as tomorrow's giveaway, which I think is for a vehicle firearm tactics DVD. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. 
Remember, oh. we just got a lot of videos like these in the Guardian Nation members. Area. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, we, we've got a bunch of, of similar training videos like this in the Guardian Nation mem members area uh, only. Uh, so if you're a Guardian Nation member, remember, you have access to all those videos. Go check them out. Uh, there will be some good stuff in there for you. And if you're not a member of Guardian Nation, check it out too, right? GuardianNation.com. Get signed up today. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.